to pursue pursue my doctoral doctoral uh, degree. Um, initially, I, I'm I'm basically a quantitative person. I've been trained to be an actuary. Um, I've been teaching all my life in UITM for eight years in the uh, School of Computer Science and Mathematics. I've been teaching mathematics. I've been teaching statistics. I've been teaching operational research and whatnot. And when I moved to UTM in 1993, I was pleased at the faculty of management, right? So I started to move away from the quantitative aspect, but still teaching quantitative courses. And I, when in 1996, I was asked to uh, prepare for my PhD. My first topic, well, my first area of research was on neural network. I even had a supervisor who is ready to supervise me uh, on neural network. But then my interest towards research started to change uh, towards entrepreneurship because I started to get involved in um, a business venture. And I realized I see, I see, I do see a lot of um, uh, problems, all right? I see, I do see a lot of problems, which I think was researching. And I start moving away from those quantitative focus. Uh, and I went to Loughborough University to start my PhD research. Now, my initial research was on technology park, all right? Now, I, I, I'll explain to you later why uh, this is important for uh, for writing your, it's important for your literature review, right? I started focusing on uh, uh, Technopark, uh, but then it was not doable. It was not doable because Malaysia do not have enough Technopark, right? Because my focus was in Malaysia. And it happened that my PhD supervisor has been in Malaysia for quite some time. He was with UUM before that as a visiting uh, professor. And of course, he has very good knowledge about Malaysia. He wants me to focus on Malaysia in my PhD. <clears throat> and then from Technopark, Technology Park, I started moving into looking at high technology firms in Malaysia. Now, another issue also uh, crops up. How do you define technology, high technology? Malaysia has a different definition uh, than any other countries. Then I realized that uh, getting access so information on high technology was very difficult at that time. The only organization was Mike. But at that time, Mike was, it was quite difficult because I have no network, all right? Uh, this is one very important um, source of your information. If you want to move on in your literature review, you must have good social capital. Your networking must be very powerful. Not only networking with the industry that you are focusing on, you must have good networking with your librarian. I will explain to you what later on, all right? So later on, I started moving into, I was looking at high technology, small, medium enterprises in Malaysia. I was focusing on three construct, uh, which is I was looking at the entrepreneur themselves, what strategy do they use? And I was also looking at the firm specific, all right? And I was using, um, I was using uh, growth. I was looking at the growth. So I had to use uh, two, measurement to measure growth. Now, all this, okay, all this requires a lot of change in my literature review. So you can just imagine moving from neural network right down to techno park, from techno park to high tech, from high tech to uh, high tech SMEs. And I was looking at the growth. So do not worry throughout your research uh, journey uh, there will be a number of changes in your research focus that is common, okay? That is common. Now, uh, I went in 1996. I came back in 1999 because of the economic crisis. It was tough living in the UK at that time, all right? My wife had to take up uh, an extra work uh, to support our stay there and as well as to pay for my, uh, for my expenses of my research, right? She was earning quite interesting. As a packer, she was earning about a thousand pounds a month, which is more than what she earned as a lecturer in UTM at that time. All right. Uh, so, uh, to the extent that um, I came back early in 1999, um, I did not complete, I did not submit my thesis. I came back, and luckily, uh, my, my, my employer, UTM, allowed me six months to complete my thesis without having any classes. Right, because I'm still within the time, time period. Now, within that 
six months, you can just imagine communicating with your supervisor through emails. It's like almost every day I was communicating through him, with him, right? right? Uh, having him to read through my, my thesis and whatnot, which I finally submitted six months later. <clears throat> and uh, I went for my, my, my Viva one year later, right? And, uh, good, and, and, and I, I was very fortunate because I had to do only a very minor, minor, minor correction. They were really looking. They, they said, no, they're not going to award me without any correction. So finally, they found two spelling mistakes. And that was my minor correction, which I submitted, which I did uh, before. It took me about uh, three minutes to correct my, they did my correction, submitted my, went for Senate for binding and whatnot. And finally, I finished my uh, PhD. So that was my journey. Now, every one of you had a different journey, right? It may not be the same. My journey and your journey may be different, right? But there are common issues. There are common experience that I think I can share with you uh, throughout my research experience and also throughout supervising my PhD students, okay? I'm very choosy about uh, selecting my PhD students, all right? Very choosy. And um, I, I, I'm, I'm not, initially I started by having 16 PhD students because at that time you we were trying to share that, oh, you know, I got so many PhD students. Then I realized I cannot be fair to them, right? I started, uh, to, I started to become very uh, selective. Um, I choose someone who I can supervise, who I can work with, whom I have chemistry. And my supervision does not take place in my office. Most of the time is outside the office. You can just imagine I took uh, all my PhD students to uh, Mount Kinabalu at the, uh, Mount Kinabalu Park to discuss about their PhD research. All right? Um, it was interesting. We we travel around around Malaysia with my PhD student. Uh, we discuss because I want I do not want to create an environment where uh, if you go to your supervisor's office you are very tense. Right? So it's better to meet somewhere which is more interesting and more more. Uh, more productive. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, it's good to see you guys coming in. Um, share your experience. I I just received a letter of appointment for a Viva Boche with uh, UTEM. I'm not sure. I can't remember the name of the student. I hope he or she is not here. Um, all right. Okay, let's move on. Now, let me share my slides. Uh, before I begin. Um, if you have any question or any anything that you would like to ask, or if you wish to comment, uh, please, uh, oh, yes, mean I, you envy me, okay, I envy you too as well. Uh, please uh, share it on the chat so that I can pick up as time goes. And uh, please, uh, I, I can't remember the name of our, our MC today. Uh, so what is your name actually? I know about one May, when May? Do, is it Dr. Dr. Sharum? Ke? I, I hope the MC could also pick up uh, some of the questions so that if I miss anything, I will try to assist you guys, All right? Okay, now let's, let us let me share my slide first. Let's see, I'm so used to using Microsoft Team. Uh, let's see whether I, I can still remember how to share my slides. Ah, got it. Okay, can you guys see the slide? Yes, bro. Okay, good. Yes. All right, thank you. Yes, Prof. Now, my 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 topic or my my uh, the um, now uh, this is the issue I I would also like to address. Um, I have quite an uh, I did not get the time to pick up all the comments that were made during uh, my previous. I also I think I was I've been uh, an examiner for more than almost forty PhD and DBA students throughout my career um, as a lecturer. I, I still have a copy, but I did not get enough time to pick up some of the comment that we made. Uh, I think Prof. Hamza, Prof. Ami Hamza did a very good job uh, in, uh, in sharing his experience and comment given by the examiners. Okay, you don't really get that kind of comments, to tell you the truth. Right? Normally, examiners will not share, even uh, me being a PhD, uh, PhD supervisor, I seldom share comment made by examiners. I will just imply to my student. If they, if they pick it up, they understand. Do not, if they do not pick it up, uh, it's up to them, all right? Because most of, of my comment with my PhD student are based on my experience during Viva Washe, right? 
Okay, now, um, this is what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to start with some preliminary work. Now, I noticed that quite a number of PhD or doctoral students still do not understand the purpose of literature review, be it um, they are PhD student, uh, DBA student, or a doctorate in education. I, I'm quite familiar with doctorate education because my wife started her doctorate in education three times, but were not able to complete because twice she sacrificed and make sure that I finish my PhD twice. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I, I, to me, I, my success. The, you got to remember, uh, your spouse is very important throughout your PhD journey. They are the one who ensure, and they are the person behind you that ensure you the success. Yeah, in 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 your in your journey, whatever it is, appreciate the support, get them to support you. It is very important, right? My wife sacrificed twice, yeah, uh, uh, so that I can complete and the final the final. Uh, 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 she did the PhD, the third one, in when we came back to UTM, but she was not able to complete because of health reason, right? So finally, she retired early from uh, Faculty of Education, UTM. Now, let's talk about preliminary work. So what we're going to do today is we're going to understand the purpose of literature review. This is very important. I noticed some of the student, PhD students that I that I, I, I examine in a private voce uh, still do not understand what is the purpose of literature review. They're still not clear. So when they are not clear, they do not come up with a good and effective literature review. And number two is how to conduct your literature search. This is very important uh, because most of the comment that uh, made by examiners in Viva Voce uh, are pertaining to the literature review. Your literature review is not up to date. Your literature review is not recent. Your literature review is not uh, thorough. Your literature review is not extensive. Uh, this other thing. Your literature review is not connected. Your literature review does not have any link between paragraph to paragraph, section to section. These are the things that I normally hear from the examiner. Your first chapter are not at all related to your literature review. All right? So it shows that although literature review stays in the second chapter, to me, Literature review is the heart of your research. Now, Pro mentioned chapter one, but I would say that uh, to me, uh, uh, chapter chapter two is very important because from chapter two, it helps you to develop your chapter one. All right. So normally, when I read um, PhD thesis, I will start with chapter one, but if I read a DBA dissertation, I will start with the last chapter. All right. I will explain why, uh, because a PhD is a research doctorate, whereas a DBA is a practice doctorate. So basically, it is a practice doctorate. I want to see what is the end result of it from the practical perspective, from the industrial perspective. For PhD, I would prefer to read the first chapter first because I want to see what is the main problem, what is the main issue, what is the main uh, motivation for the research. All right. So basically, then we're going to discuss about how to conduct your literature search, what is literature research, uh, what are the purpose of literature search, uh, sources of information, uh, how do you read efficiently? This is very important. When I was doing my PhD in Loughborough University, uh, we have short training program during lunchtime. And this is very difficult formulation. You know why? We bring our lunch. While having lunch, we attend short courses on research or on, on, on how to use uh, Microsoft Word, or how to, how, how to uh, do referencing, just one hour during lunchtime. Because the problem is Malaysian punya lunch is very heavy. The, the masaleh comes with a simple lunch like sandwich. Uh, I got a friend of mine who just bring salad. Uh, we came in with nasi lemak. We came in with nasi berlauk. So it was difficult, but we finally I changed my, my style of diet. So lunchtime, I started uh, to go light. And then after the training session, I will go to the Surau to buy a packet of rice, which was sold by the Malaysian student. All right? So that was what we did. And one of the things that we were uh, required to attend is a course on speed reading. I did not understand why. 
I was asking uh, my supervisor, why should I tell anything on speed reading? I'm doing my PhD research. On after attending that speed reading courses, I realized how important it is to me, especially when you have to read tons and tons of articles, tons and tons of literatures, numerous books. Then I realized that speed reading helped me to effectively read and uh, and pick up very important points and issues. And then I remember when I was doing my undergraduate in the US a long time ago, I attended one class on uh, speed reading. It was meant for reading only books, right? Meant for only reading books. And then I figured out the two words together. I realized that it is also very important for research. If you have the time, go and attend any courses on speed reading. It will help you. It will help you in reading your literature review. And then we can do some, uh, then finally we can do some writing in all up. Uh, how are you good? How do you get organized? How do you structure your write up? And you will learn how to write uh, each section later on. If you have enough time, I will also go on systematic uh, literature review. Okay. Because normally this kind of, uh, when I was teaching research methodology in, in, in UTM many, many years ago, it will take me one week to cover literature review to my master's student, just one, just on this. All right. So um, uh, let us move on. Um, let me start by uh, going into preliminary work. Okay. Now, before you actually begin uh, to, 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 to focus on writing up your literature, there are a few things that you have to do first, right? The few things that you have to do first. Now, <clears throat> hold on a second. Okay. Now, what is what is a literature review? This is very interesting. Okay. What is a literature review? Now, literature review is basically a part of a thesis, but definitely it is in chapter two. Um, when I was in the UK, there was no restriction with regard to how you write your thesis. You can have as many chapters as possible for your literature review. I had three chapters for my literature review. I'm not sure now, but I know most Malaysian universities will only allow one chapter. So please, please read your uh, your 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 handbook okay handbook that is given to you uh, i'm sorry unita i'm still preparing your your dba handbook it should be out soon all right so basically um 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 it is part of the thesis it is very important okay and this is where extensive reference to related research and theory in your field is being discussed okay it is where you connect the dots. It is where connections are made between source text that you draw on and where you position yourself now and your research among these sources. So basically, after going through all those researches, where did you position yourself? All right? Where did you position your research among all these sources? All right? So basically, this is what uh, literature review is all about. That, that, in a way that um, you have when you say extensive reference, you have to do a lot of reading. I remember when I was in the UK, there was no online uh, sources available as what you got you, you had now. So I had to photocopy the articles, okay? And I had to, uh, every time I download the articles, um, I had to rush back to my office where we have access to photocopy machine. Uh, we are given cards, so we are given something like 500 copies every three months right so they put they place the photocopy machine uh, at the my supervisor's uh, secretary's office so that she can monitor uh, because the Malaysians are a bit uh, um, um, over over zealous when it comes to photocopying they like to photocopy everything so we have to make sure that there is no plagiarism plagiarism when it comes to photocopying so we are allowed to copy only not more than certain number of pages per text not more than 10 pages per textbook we go more than that, uh, we, we could be charged for um, for, project, for uh, going infringing the Copyright Act. So we were not allowed to photocopy. And that's why normally when students come in my class, we have a photocopy of the entire textbook, I will ask him to leave because that he is infringing the Copyright Act. Uh, so in, in the UK, they are, very, they are very careful. So make sure that, uh, um, I'm not sure about Malaysia, I don't think we really look into it, but in the UK, they are very, very particular no more than 10 pages of photocopying from a textbook. Okay, so basically, um, 
you this is this is uh, okay what what do you do basically so what you do is you survey the literature in your area of study all right you survey you look around uh, there are many ways i will discuss about that later on after you have surveyed uh, you want to know where the literatures are how do you get them uh, what do you do with them you analyze right you analyze not just read but analyze okay not just read but analyze and then you synthesize them i will explain later on what you synthesize and this is the issue the comment that uh, most uh, students uh, got during a phd viper is you do not really your literature is not literature review is not critical enough uh, you do not uh, you did not really synthesize your literature now what do they mean by synthesize we will discuss later on okay and uh, from there you also we wish through literature review right it will show what we do know and what we do not know in our area of study you see that is why by the time you finish your phd you will have read thousands of articles which will help you to develop your capacity as an expert in that area right now i like you your your your, your time now you might during my time i will photocopy the article rush back to uh the graduate uh, the the we have a common room where we share about the 25 of us at the, at the business school in Lampard university so we share uh, sometimes we share table unlike uh, some universities in malaysia you are very fortunate to have your own office or of your own space but over there we had to share yeah uh, and, um, and and normally i would work over the time at, uh, at home i cannot uh, do my work there because my korean friend uh, likes to he likes to talk so the moment he saw me there he would come to my desk and started chatting with me so i cannot do my work so i will go back home do it so i will photocopy it and i will pick, put it in a bag i will carry the bag go back to the library okay or I, i'll go back home to read i will spend time in the library i will start reading the article so basically by the time i came back to malaysia i have five boxes of photocopied articles journals article and some from the from the textbook which i send for recycling uh, because i cannot take them back they are too heavy right so I, I don't need to take them back home because i really passed my phd i mean i really uh, no i took them back sorry i took them back all five boxes to malaysia i do not want to dispose them because i have not finished my phd yet i only dispose them when i finish my viva i came back to malaysia Just imagine five big boxes of articles I have to carry. At that time, there was no soft copies of articles and whatnot uh, in 1996. So it was tough, right? So just imagine five boxes of articles that comes to about I think thousands of articles that I have to read. And when I when 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 I ask my student uh, to do a review, I don't expect them to review 20 articles, 30 articles. I expect them to do what I did. I had to review more than a thousand articles right i hope the uh, chiamaka is here listening to this okay let's move on oh it's not moving okay great now let's look at the purpose of literature review because i noticed most of the students um, that i i, I when mean, i attended the viva boche uh, they still do not understand what is the purpose of a literature review right now uh, the multiple purpose of literature review, there are multiple purpose, uh, uh, and these are among them, all right? Number one is to provide, you provide a, uh, to, uh, to provide a historical background for your research, especially when you come to background or study, and if you're looking at uh, theoretical evolution, for example, uh, you may want uh, to start with classical literature in your discussion, but don't, don't spend too much time, like, uh, like Prof. Uh, uh, Prohamel says last week, uh, your, at least your literature must be recent at least five years, but you do can quote some classical literature. But be very careful when you quote, you quote classical literature. I've caught one student who was citing Schumpeter. Her research, oh no, his research was about entrepreneurship and innovation. He was quoting Schumpeter papers in 19, uh, Schumpeter's wrote in 1934, right? So when, when I asked him, uh, did you read that article? He says, yes, show it to me. He couldn't show it. You know why? Because that original article in 1934 was still written in German. It was only translated into English, no, 1931, sorry. It was only translated into English in 1934, right? He was quoting someone else's uh, articles 
without even reading uh, the original article. So you have to be extra careful when you quote classical articles. Make sure that that classical article has been trusted into a language that you understand, all right? And don't spend too much time on uh, classical, just to show that the, the, the evolution, the historical evolution, because you, you want to come up with your research, you, you want to come up with your research framework, therefore you need to look at the theoretical framework. Okay. Um, how do I get to see the uh, the chat? I don't have a chat with me. No questions yet, bro. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, wow, what happened here? Why is my slide? How do I go back? Okay, yeah. All right. And uh, number two, it gave an overview of the current context in which your research is situated by referring to the contemporary contemporary debates, issues, and questions that may arise in the field, right? It doesn't come out of the blues, okay? It must come from somewhere, and definitely it comes from your literature review, right? You would like to know what are the current issues, what are the current debates, what are the questions that are being discussed in the field of your research, right? Where do you get them from, of course, from your literature review? It includes a discussion of relevant theories, concepts, right? And what is the difference between theories and concepts uh, which underpin your research? It introduces relevant terminology and provides definition to clarify how terms are being used in the context of your own work. When, remember in chapter one, uh, uh, Dr. Prahami Hamza, uh, Prof. Amir Hamza, was it? Oh, Hamza Amir. Prahami Hamza, yeah, mentioned about uh, the, 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 uh, um, the definition of the terms. Where does those definition comes from? It must come from the literature review. I've seen students coming up with the operational definition from out of the blues, and when we ask them how they got this, oh, um, this I I I coin out uh, through my reading. But we asked him to relate to the literature review. It's not there, right? It's not there. So it must come from the literature review. It's from there you come up with your terms, the definition of terms, all right? Okay, it describes related research in the field and show how you would extend or challenges this or addresses a gap in the world. This is how some of you may not have any idea yet. I'm, I'm, uh, I've, I've seen, I've, I've, I've I had a student after one year still uh, not able to come up with a gap, right? So I asked him her to start going back to the literature, see what you can see there. And from there, finally, she came back to me, Prof, I think I've got an idea, right? I've got an idea. So literature is very important. And it provides supporting evidence. This is very important. In, in, in any, any, any PhD or DBA or deep ed or whatever you call it, even, uh, even uh, you talk about uh, veterinary medicine, science or whatnot, evidence is very important. Right? Evidence is very important. So that is why it must be supported by the literature review. Okay? We have cases, students citing something in the problem statement. When we ask them, please, Show which which part of which part of your literature review that support this problem statement. He or she cannot show us, right? Finally, we ask we ask uh, him or her. I won't say him or her, him or her to go for a major correction just because of that particular component, right? She he has to rewrite back the literature review and um, and replace back her problem statement. And when it comes to uh, problem statement, it go, it, go, it comes down. To the objective of the study, she has to redo uh, the the, uh, the 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 uh, the research question, almost everything, just because she was not able to support, right? So when she provide, uh, came back, she provide, she realized that she had to. It's true, she had to do some extensive uh, correction on the entire. Luckily, she did not have to go and collect uh, additional data, right? Uh, it was lucky for her. Uh, we mentioned her. Lucky for her that the, uh, the correction that she did only concerns chapter one and two. And because when she go back and did a thorough literature search, uh, she was lucky that whatever she wrote in the problem statement was supported, right? I, 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 to me, uh, the, the problem statement was okay. It's just that it's, there's no evidence support, right? So she had to write at least, I think about six more pages into the literature review. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, okay. Now, theory versus concept. This is very important. I noticed that um, when it comes to writing a literature review, some students are still unclear 
uh, what is meant by theory and concept because this will have i remember in in, in the last session uh, there was a lot of question on theoretical concept uh on, and also on, uh, on 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 conceptual sorry theoretical framework and conceptual framework now if you look at the meaning of the terms theory and concept uh, um it uh, some uh, de de definitely it will be interpreted differently right and in even in different field of search uh, research you define theory and concept differently but generally speaking in in, in in a common way a theory can be described as a framework which offers an explanatory device of them in the form of categories and relationships. So theory tend to explain, uh, for example, uh, Porter Five Forces model uh, is, is a theory by itself, right? Uh, which have to explain uh, the relationship of uh, various uh, variables. So in scientific sense, it is likely to be a proposition which both explain, predict relationship between two phenomena. So it describes the relationship, it tend to describe the relationship. All right. Whereas a concept is a word or expression that represents a general or abstract idea, all right, which is derived from more specific instances. For example, you derive from uh, democracy. Democracy is idea. Social class is idea. Stress is basically an idea. In other words, a concept is a representation of an idea in the word or phrase. So the use of concept gives us a meaning of making sense in the world. So it comes to the concept. Now it comes to the definition of theoretical framework and conceptual framework. I think you, you begin to see the difference. Right? When you talk about theoretical framework, it is based on something uh, which, uh, pre, uh, which clearly uh, explain the relationship, whereas a uh, conceptual framework is more of a concept that you uh, pick out from your literature review. Okay, you have a concept that you want to test uh, through, you want to test a hypothesis and see whether uh, this really works or not. Right. And normally in a conceptual framework, you do have a theoretical framework to support your conceptual framework. Okay, just move on. Uh, this is what I meant, conceptual framework. It is a framework you are developing after rigorous literature review and wanted to test the hypothesis associated with the framework. Sometimes conceptual framework are also called research model or research framework by different researchers, scholars, or some refinement and whatnot and what more. So basically, as you can see here, um, um, this uh, um, is something when you come up with your uh, after coming up with your literature review, you have a conceptual framework that you want to test, all right? So basically, um, that is normally what uh, it is in your in, in your in, in your uh, in your research. Whereas a the theoretical framework is based on based on previous theories, based on previous framework, based on previous model that you are reviewing during your literature review, and normally a researcher would de develop his or her conceptual framework, and depend it on some theoretical framework, which she or she has reviewed, right? For example, uh, you may have uh, one, uh, like what I did, uh, my conceptual framework was on, I was trying to determine what factors affect growth of high-tech SMEs in Malaysia. So my conceptual framework is based on the notion that, uh, okay, I look at the firm's characteristic, I look at the uh, entrepreneur characteristic, and I look at the strategy used by the firm. And to me, I believe that these three um, will affect growth. But uh, at that time, my, during my time, research was simple, right? And, and, and I also have um, uh, uh, theories to support. Uh, those are known as, uh, I'm a, for example, I have a theoretical framework based on growth, right? Uh, to support my, 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 my uh, conceptual framework. Usually without theoretical framework to support your conceptual framework, you might expose yourself to further questioning during any article review or during your viva. Um, and and, and that, that's what some people say, you got to have an underpinning theory or whatnot, right? So theoretical framework are more are important as they serve as a lifesaver, a base, a float, in which without them, your conceptual framework might sink miserably, all right? Uh, so it must be supported by a strong uh, theoretical framework. Or in most cases, we call it uh, the underpinning theory. Okay. All right. Now, uh, how do you, how how do you how do we narrow down on the theory? It is based on uh, quite okay, good students are coming in. Hold on a second. Um, proposition question. Okay, okay, I'll get to that later on. Let me finish this. Now, there there are a number of types of literature uh, review. Number one is known as the integrative review where you review, you critique, you synthesize re relevant literature 
on a given topic. This is very common. This is what normally most PhD students will do. And uh, sometimes they will also incorporate methodological review into their chapter two, right? They examine how a problem has been studied and does not focus on what the study found. They are more concerned with the methods that were used. Okay. So, um, for example, how researchers studied adolescent without reading the PPT. You can highlight ways we have not examined a uh, problem. So, you can highlight that uh, way that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that has not been examined before. So, you want to use that method, for example. So, you can have both. Now, I've seen students, uh, there was one case recently where a student. Um, did a methodological review in chapter three in the research method. And we asked him to move it back to literature review because what he did was he is reviewing uh, literatures pertaining to the methodological review. He was doing a methodological review basically. So we asked him to move it back because it is actually a literature review, right? So, uh, and then when you get to chapter three, you come with, you, you, then you come up with your method based on what is that is discussed in chapter two. Okay, uh, hold on a second, let me get out the chat. Uh, how do you narrow down on theories? Is it based on the student's proposed research question objective? Uh, or just, okay, uh, this is, I think, the role of literature review. It's very important that you have a thorough literature review uh, to determine what sort of theory uh, is important. If you have not done extensive literature review, uh, you may keep on asking uh, what, is the relevant theory behind it. So if, if you, uh, this is very important. I will explain to you later on, on how you tabulate, you summarize uh, literatures as you read. And during that summarization, you also pick up theories or theoretical framework, which will help to explain um, the, the gap that you are focusing on. Okay, I'll get to that later on. Please, can, can you please explain where in the body of literature can we find the theoretical framework or of other authors, thank you, Prof. All right, now, uh, I think you did, uh, if you look at the underpinning theory, some of you discuss, okay? Now, basically, this is one uh, way of uh, discussing on the theoretical framework, because it provides a framework from, from that underpinning theory discussion, it provides a theoretical framework for you to move ahead with developing your, 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 your research framework or your, your uh, conceptual framework, all right? Um, Okay, let's see if I can find them here. I'll just I'll share with you. Parameters of what consider as a good theoretical framework. Okay, we we I'll get to you to that later on. Right now, um, let's move on. I will pick up some of your question and address it later. Um, now, how to conduct your literature review? Okay, um, there are, I think. Uh, for, for most of us, the first time when you meet your supervisor, I'm sure the first thing that he will do, will say to you is go and find articles and read. Go and find articles and read, right? Uh, so you start going to the library or you start going online and you start searching, searching and searching and searching. And finally, you realize that uh, you, you found so many articles, so many uh, literatures, but you're not sure which literatures are you going to use? Which literatures are you going to focus on? Or uh, whether you have enough literatures yeah, to start writing? This is the issue that, um, uh, that uh, normally a first-timer uh, doctoral student will face in his or her journey. Right? I remember my supervisor would say, son, have you done exhaustive literature search? Uh, I keep asking myself, what does he mean by exhaustive? Yeah? Have you done a thorough literature search? What does he mean by thorough? I think I've done enough. So when I went to see him, um, because he, my, my supervisor at that time when I did my PhD under him, he, he, he doesn't even have a PhD yet. Okay, in the UK at that time, the system allowed someone without a PhD to supervise a PhD student. But he is an expert in his area. He is someone who is recognized by the industry. Uh, and, 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 and when he supervised me, he provides me with sufficient um, sufficient uh, experience, sufficient data, sufficient information pertaining to uh, his area of research. Right? He did a lot of research. And after graduating three PhD students, all from Malaysia, he went to Sheffield for his PhD and got it. Right? So he, he, he got his PhD after graduating three PhD students. 
kan uh, seems to be awkward ya. But in Malaysia we can do that. In Malaysia the MQA standard requires that a supervisor, a doctoral supervisor must have a doctoral degree. You cannot have someone without a doctoral degree to supervise a doctoral candidate. All right. So that is the issue. Okay. Also, many man, 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 yes, says, uh, I mean, to go, I want you to go and do systematic and thorough exhaustive research. He never told me how to do it. He just said, go, right? So this is the issue. This is the dilemma that most, uh, I think, any any doctoral student will face on their first phase of their journey, All right? So they need, they need to search. But basically, according to Gesh, now, uh, he defined sys, uh, literature search as a systematic and thorough. So your literature search must be systematic, must be thorough, must be exhaustive, right? Of all types of published, all types of published literature in order to identify as many items as possible they are relevant to a particular topic. And this is, I think it comes back to the first question just now about theoretical framework, right? You must do a systematic and thorough exhaustive uh, literature search uh, to come up with a strong and solid theoretical foundation. Um, this is tough actually because uh, I think most of my time when I was doing my PhD uh, is to spend a lot of it on uh, literature search, right? I would carry with me two bags of uh, photocopied articles uh, to the library or from my house to the library. If I work in the library, I would carry with me. Um, <laughs> Uh, we, we are given a key and a one room which we can use for one semester. I will put it there. I cannot work in my office because it's a shared office. So I put it in that uh, room that, that was which I uh, which I uh, rent uh, that was allowed for PhD students need to use for one for one uh, one year. I think I got it for one, no for six months. Okay, so I stored everything in there. So if you go to that office, the particular room in the library, you see papers, 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 right? At that time, uh, we don't got that many uh, online uh, articles yet. So it is a, it is basically your literature search is a crucial part of your research process, and it is the basis of your reading, right? And subsequently, the written literature review, which appears in your dissertation or thesis. You say, I'm not sure because I, based on my reading, I found out that the the younger generation do not like to read. They do not like to read, uh, and this may be a bit of a problem. Uh, when supervising the younger generation, because I have one in my house, he hates reading, right? He hates reading, especially lengthy literatures. He likes to write uh, short, short articles. Okay, I think maybe because of the uh, digital uh, generation. Uh, so this is a big problem when you ask them to read uh, long articles, and the, and when you go for your PhD research, that is what you normally do, right? And, uh, uh, it, and, and, and literature search is ongoing part of your work. It is ongoing process. It goes on and on and on until you submit your thesis, right? Until you submit your thesis. Now, for example, I got one student uh, recently who started her P his PhD uh, from one university. I cannot, explain, I cannot uh, uh, disclose that university. He started in 2016. Um, and then he stopped abruptly because of uh, certain issues and started, with, started work again in 2018 and finally submitted uh, in 20, 2021. Um, and then when we, start, when we look at his literature review, we found out that um, his literature stops at 2018. He never updated. Okay, he never updated. And uh, we finally, well, they, they update a bit, but one or two articles, that's it. Okay, because he thought that is sufficient. So finally, we uh, he had to go for a major correction um, to update the literature because we were worried that after updating the literature, it may affect uh, the, 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 the entire uh, process of the research, right? He may have to do again data collection and whatnot. <clears throat> and he was lucky. He was lucky because there was not much uh, changes going on uh, with respect to the uh, literatures. Um, and uh, although he came up with quite a number of literature, current literatures, he was quite lucky that he did not have to uh, redo his data collection. So lesson learned is, please uh, keep on updating your literature, right? In my case, for example, I would advise my student even until 
to the end when you are about to submit, you must update your literature. Now, some supervisor would put a cut of point, right? Say like uh, three months before submission, okay, stop there and we submit. So it depends on how your supervisor looks at it. In my case, right up to even before submission, you must make sure that your literature is recent. As long as it does not affect your, your, um, your, uh, I mean, your overall process, okay? To show that your, your, you have done a very thorough, exhaustive literature search. Now, in addition to doing a thorough literature search early, early in, a, in a research process, it is important to continue to look for relevant reading. So as you go on, keep on. Even though you're doing data collection, if you're doing um, data analysis, you still have to um, keep on doing literature search and make sure that nothing is being missed and keep up to date with new publications, right? Nothing is missed, it's very important because some examiners, they are so well-versed in that area, they know who are the uh, researcher that who did a lot of research in what area. And if his articles or his literature is not in your literature review, you're in trouble, right? Uh, so that's why before uh, you submit your article, if you know who your uh, examiner is, please look up uh, some of his uh, publication and, uh, and see his references as well. Make sure that not only you cited his paper, also look at some of the references that he likes to cite, okay? Um, I know some universities will not disclose the name of the external examiner, right? Uh, in my case in UTM, when I was in UTM, we do uh, inform our student so that our student will start looking for uh, resources or references pertaining uh, to papers published by uh, the external examiner. This is just to give some feeling that uh, your, your literature is um, up to date, the recent one. Some, some examiner will think that, oh, my paper is not that, this is not up to date, it's not recent. Okay, so just a, a thought that comes up in my mind. Okay, the availability of information electronic, electronically, right, has meant that literature searching has become much, much more complex than in the past. True. Right. I noticed uh, because of the influx of information coming in, uh, because of too many literature that uh, comes in at one particular time, I noticed that some of my PhD then got mixed up. They got, um, they, are, they become, they become blank for a while. Yeah, because too many information, information or overload, right? Although the speed and convenience at which sources can be accessed is, has also increased. Although you can, okay, because the problem is when you have too many uh, articles to read at one time, uh, you may find it, uh, you may find it uh, in terms of time that you have to spend more time in, in reading uh, such article. And that's why, as I said earlier, speed reading is very important because it helps you to, um, to read as many articles as possible, but efficiently. Right, but efficiently. Okay. Right, now let's move on. <clears throat> so that's why I say uh, you have to keep on search, search, and search, right? Search, search, and search. Um, I remember when I was doing my PhD, um, I had uh, much of the articles not available at my university library. So we, I had to get them to get the articles to through interlibrary loan from the British Library. So if you if your university library uh, doesn't have access to some of the articles, perhaps you can search them and get them through interlibrary loan. Okay, through interlibrary loan. Uh, I know uh, the university will normally. I'm not sure about Malaysia when during my experience in the UK, um, the my university will pay because it's charged to my fees. For every paper, I think at that time it was about two pounds or three pounds, I can't remember. Yeah. So that's why uh, my supervisor always reminded me, keep Hassan, make sure you keep the paper, pay those articles in good condition because we have to pay for it. All right, it's not free actually. Okay, now let's stop for a while. Now, <clears throat> um, okay, can you please explain where in the body of literature can we find the theoretical framework of other? Uh, yeah, I think I, I explained it to you, that to you earlier. There was, I mean, normally before you come to your theoretical framework, you did a lot of discussion on, uh, especially on the underpinning theory. Um, and I think that's where you start discussing about the uh, theoretical framework. 
and uh, and and normally uh, before you get on to your you see the problem is i noticed most um, discussion on literature review did not connect up the dot they do they did a very thorough very good discussion on uh, various theories okay or i shall say the theoretical paper we discussed earlier but they did not tie up the knot and connect it to the uh, conceptual framework uh, to the end that when an examiner reads it uh, it feels he feels that the conceptual framework just come out from the sky right whereas it should be related to the and supported by the various uh, theoretical framework that you discussed earlier normally during the earlier discussion before you reach to your uh, your 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 conceptual framework is where you have a lot of discussion being placed on your theoretical framework. Uh, example of articles. Example, can you share some examples articles on how to do a critical review? Okay, that one I'll get to you. I have it in my presentation later on. Uh, share parameters of what's considered as a good theoretical framework. Uh, okay, good. Now I, I do see a lot of the theoretical uh, discussion, theoretical framework, or theoretical uh, discussion uh, discussed. As I said earlier, the problem is not on the theoretical discussion, but the, the problem is on the linkages. How do you link those uh, extensive discussion on those literatures on on those uh, theoretical uh, issues that you discuss? How do you relate them? How do you come up to your uh, conceptual framework that is missing okay there is a missing link there All right so i think uh to me um the discussion there's a, the discussion was good but when it come to linking it connecting the dots um recently i had one uh, uh it was a dba uh dissertation um she, she did a very good discussion on the uh on the on the, on the, on the supporting theory on the theoretical framework and everything and then suddenly we found out that her conceptual framework was not connected to what she discussed earlier. So we asked them, where did you get this conceptual framework? Oh, I got it uh, uh, based on my experience. So I feel that um, I, um, I, I want to test whether this uh, conceptual framework is workable. So we asked them, so why are you discussing the earlier theory? Oh, you say, because I, I need to do that for my literature review. So that shows that the person do not understand the purpose of the literature review, right? She was not able to connect the dot with what she discussed earlier and with what uh, she uh, wished to test for her research, right? And this is quite common. Um, I see do I, I do see this a lot um, in 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 most of the uh, discussion on literature reviews. Um, my supervisor always reminded me, Hassan, make sure you link up all the discussion that you made in your literature review. He always advised me on linkages. What are the link? There's no link. Or um, uh, this is a standalone discussion. I want to see linkages. So sometimes the term that you use in the discussion, discussion like moreover, however, these are the things that can also uh, provide some, some, some additional linkages to your discussion. Okay. However, uh, based on Thompson, blah, 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 um, uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the relationship uh, has not been tested and moreover, things like that. Okay, it helps to provide uh, you with some, uh, some, uh, some, some ease yeah, in, in writing up. Uh, okay, I'll get to more on that later on. Uh, why I put on my computer, why is it blank? Okay, all right. Now, uh, not only is there a phenomenal amount of information, yes, this happened to me as well when I was doing my PhD research. Okay, I was carrying all sorts of articles in my bag. Um, um, not only is there a phenomenal amount of information available, which you can retrieve from your own computer or even mobile phone uh, or through the internet, but there's also a wide variety of ways that you can search for this information. So there are many ways that you can search for this information. And uh, the choices can be very daunting because uh, when you first start doing your research, um, most universities will offer courses on information management. Please do attend, okay? If your university conduct courses for you, especially on, on, on managing your uh, literature review, please go and attend. Do not miss it because it is very important. Uh, it will help you a lot throughout your, your research uh, process. 
Okay, because I know some students will just ah, I don't have to go. I can just read and understand. Uh, oh, the tragedy is quite simple. I've done it for during my under, my undergraduate uh, project. No, it's it's not that. Uh, it's it's not that what you experienced earlier. Okay, there are tools, techniques that you can learn, uh, and they will they will show you. Especially the library will organize this. Okay, they will show you. They will share with you uh, on how to manage the various information that you gather from your literature search, right? So of course, uh, such as this is time well spent and will help you to identify the most suitable search tools for your academic discipline and particular area of work. My problem when I started my PhD was I came late. Um, there was an issue with my visa. I came late, I, went, I arrived late in the UK. I came one week later and I missed the training program that they conducted. So I had to wait another semester to start uh, go again, and I was struggling during that uh, one month, uh, that one that first semester, struggling because I missed uh, most of the courses, right? And uh, and 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 then finally, uh, my my colleagues helped me a lot. Yeah, I remember a few of my friends from Korea. There was a guy from Turkey. Uh, there was a guy from uh, uh, from uh, I remember his name, Dean Pogles. He was from. London, uh, they really, really get together and help me out. And they, they provide a training, a uh, short training for me, uh, what they have undergone to. So that, that helps me a bit during my first semester to overcome uh, most of my uh, challenges that I face, right? So please uh, do not uh, miss it, go for it. If you, are, if you are going, if you are about to start, whatever it is, go for this kind of training program. It's very good for you. If you do not take a specific information management course, be sure to allow the library librarian, sorry, to be your friend and become comfortable about approaching the librarian for assistance. Right? When I was in the UK, um, I, I mean, good, I, I, I mean, I, I became close to the librarian. I remember uh, Gloria. I remember David. Uh, I will every morning. I will approach the library. I will say hi. Um, uh, sometimes I would just bring coffee for them. Um, just, just, just to uh, maintain a good repo, and every time when I need assistance, uh, I will go and find them, and I will get whatever help I need. All right, this is what you call uh, networking. So in research, your networking is also very important. Um, get to know who are the librarian, uh, who can, uh, who can help you out. Okay, uh, they will not be able to conduct your searches, but they can offer guidance. And they may be subject specialists in the library who can point you out in the direction of your research topic. Okay. Now I know it's tough uh, when we are working during this uh, MCO. Uh, you never get a chance to go to campus and whatnot. Uh, I'm sure sometimes you can work online. So try to get to know these people and get them to assist you. Okay. So um, <laughs> right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that was what I did when uh, when. MCO started to loosen down. There were a few students, my doctoral student came to visit me. Uh, the first thing I'll do is I took them to visit our library, our knowledge management center. I introduced them to the guy in charge uh, because uh, they started when during the MCO, so they were not able to gain access. So I introduced them and, uh, and after from that day onwards, um, they know the librarian very well, okay? Now, what is the purpose of literature search? Number one is to identify the field and specific context in which your work is situated, right? So at the beginning of, of your literature search, uh, your reading tend to be very exploratory. You're not sure what you're gonna do, what's, uh, what are the contexts. So you just read and explore, okay? Ah, okay, let me hold on a second. Uh, do we need to have underpinning theories for all variables in the study? Example, a study that investigate potential uh, contamination. Now, I think you need to discuss with your supervisors as well. Uh, it depends on the type of research. Um, if, uh, but to me, I think under, under theory, underpinning theory is still uh, important because it helps to strengthen um, your, 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 your research, right? Uh, if I'm not wrong, um, there was one university that requires the student to have a, a section on underpinning theory. 
So they will put a section under, under pinning theory. I mean, it is compulsory to have a section on a discussion on underpinning theory. Right? If I were you, I would discuss this with your supervisors, uh, see what he says. And if he, uh, I know some supervisors, most supervisors will recommend you to have an underpinning theory. Because I know if you go to your Viva, uh, they, the, they will ask you, the examiner would like to know what is your under, underpinning theory. So it's best to have it. Yeah, it's best to have it. <clears throat> um, I would like to ask a question. If my research is in China, can I use a Chinese literature? I translate the literature citation into English or minus I use English literature. Uh, okay, I understand the issue. Um, what I meant was um, when, when uh, the guy was cite, my example was the guy was citing an article that was written in German. Uh, he should have cited the article when it was translated, right? That was the what was I meant. I mean, I, I didn't say you cannot. You, you can, right? You can cite articles uh, that is based on uh, your language, um, um, but you need to translate. Yes, I agree. You need to translate it into English, right? Um, sometimes when you do research which is specific to that country. It's difficult to find articles that has been translated into English, like Japan, for example. Um, they publish in uh, journals that's written in Japanese or even in China, for example. I think uh, to me that, that is okay, right? As long as you translate uh, the cites, citation into English, that shows that that, uh, that there is such a uh, but by the way, discuss with your supervisor. What does your supervisor say about it? Right? But some if some supervisor they say, no, I want it, I want an I want you to cite articles in English because I do not understand uh, that language. So basically, uh, you have to do that. So discuss with your supervisor. If he agrees, go ahead. Okay. Can you explain why some scholars believe theory is just a guide for research? Uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, I, 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 I would agree to that because it guides you in your research. You see, I, I will explain later on why uh, you need to do a literature review because, in a sense, that um, most um, most uh, concepts are always supported by theory. Theory is very important, right? <clears throat> now, as, as you proceed along with your doctoral uh, thesis, if you're doing PhD research, especially if you're doing PhD, yes, theory is very, very important. You've got to spend a lot on theories. Uh, whereas if you're doing a DBA, for example, that may be slightly different in the sense that um, um, it is a professional uh, doctorate so it looks uh, mostly into the practical aspect on, on the practice aspect, but theory is still important to support. Okay, so theory is very important to support your contention. It's very important to support your 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 um, your model, your research model, or your, your conceptual framework. Um, even if our life are, are, are so much explained by theories, right? For example, you woke up one morning, you feel you got a big headache. Uh, you saw, you still saw at the back of your neck. Uh, so you started thinking now, based on my reading, uh, normally the theory says that if you started having a headache, having a, a pain in behind your neck, wow, okay, then uh, test your, go and test your blood pressure, all right? So you go and test your blood pressure, all right? Uh, so basically you act based on certain theories that you have read somewhere or something theory that you know. So basically uh, without theories, I think, uh, most of the uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, our daily life, yeah, um, um, maybe a little bit difficult for us to move on. Did you try and do things without theory or without knowledge? Knowledge theory, knowledge is based on theory. So without uh, theory, without knowledge, you find it difficult to move on. And that's why you need theory to support uh, your contention. Okay, your your literature search give you ideas about focal point of your research the wider context in which it will sit, okay? So basically, what is the focal point of your research? Remember, you started as being exploratory, okay? You started about something being exploratory. And then as you read, uh, you begin to synthesize, uh, you begin to uh, narrow down, you begin to, uh, uh, you begin to narrow your focus, right? You begin to hone, home in into a topic, okay? So it will assist you in identifying your approach, your research and methodology you wish to adopt. Remember, I went through that difficulty. Um, I started, I wasn't sure where I'm heading to. 
after reading so many articles, I realized that I discussed with my supervisor, we, did, we decided that this is not doable. So I had to change my research focus. Change, do it again, it's not doable. All this was, uh, I, all those was determined through my literature search. Literature search, my literature review, right? So it helps me a lot to uh, help me to narrow down where I want to move on. More specifically, it will help you identify the type of data you might collect and use, size of data collection, sample size, and how you might analyze that. Remember I mentioned about the methodological uh, literature review, and this is where you want to uh, see whether um, you, uh, what, what, how are you gonna, how are you method, how, how are you gonna collect your data in, in, in testing your, your research model? So reading around topic is a mean of identifying what and how you wish to research, right? It is essential that you gain a thorough and comprehensive knowledge in the field. And that is why by the time you finish your PhD or your doctoral uh, degree, you become an expert in that area, okay? Because of your comprehensiveness of knowledge that you got through your reading and, and, and searching and researching uh, in, in during the entire three to four years, right? I, I, I got a friend of mine uh, who is an engineer. <clears throat> uh, he went to do his PhD in HRM. And um, he, you know, he's now an expert in HRM, right? He can talk about theories, he can talk about practice, he can talk about anything. Because being an engineer, he tend to be very process oriented. So when he did his PhD in HRM, uh, he was looking into the process of uh, HRM, right? And it was, he, he, he came, he, he employed a lot of uh, engineering theories or concepts into uh, HRM, and he became a very expert in that area, which no other HRM uh, directors are. Okay, so in a way, uh, by having his PhD in our HRM, um, he is someone who understands how an engineering uh, company works, right? When it comes to HRM practices, so he became an expert in the area. Now. Um, by increasing your awareness, knowledge, and understanding of the area, you will be a better position to make more informed choices about the important research-related issues identified above. Okay, identified earlier, right? So basically, uh, this this is why uh, the literature search is very important. Okay, and uh, through literature search, you can find out what others have done, so that you will not duplicate other people's work, or you do not duplicate the previous work. It's not only to see what things that have not been done but to see also what has been done so that you will not do reinvent the wheel, right? Uh, do something that has been done earlier. I remember uh, many, many years ago, there was a lecturer from UITM, uh, Faculty of Engineering. He was studying in San Francisco, doing his PhD. Um, he was about to finish uh, his PhD research before he went for his viva. Someone else when uh, presented a similar topic uh, at another university, uh, almost on the same area, same, almost similar topic. Uh, they did not meet each other. They did not know that uh, each, uh, each were doing uh, research in similar area. And since that guy beat him to his viva by a few weeks, so he had to start a new research. He had to start a new research because um, some, uh, if he was, he, because it, it looked as though that he has duplicated someone else's work. Right? Although they never met before, they do not know that each other were doing similar research. And that is why uh, it's good for you to publish. It's good for you to publish, to tell others that, hey, I'm doing a research in this particular topic or issues, okay? I will really put my stamp on it, all right? Don't try to duplicate uh, this, uh, don't try to duplicate uh, what I'm doing, all right? So it's good to publish. I, this is my, that's why I always encourage my students to publish, not because of uh, just to, to graduate, but also to let people know that hey, there's someone else doing research in this area. Uh, if you're doing a similar research, I'm really, uh, perhaps you're already into data collection and this guy is about to start, then it's best for him or her to start looking into other research focus okay? so that you will not become a duplicate of what you are doing. Okay. Now, <clears throat> a further purpose of your literature review is to, to identify key people, organization, and text. Uh, which are relevant to your research, okay? So when, when you start, for example, in my case, when I did my PhD research, 
Ray Oki was one of the key or main uh, authors that I, I, I recognize as to be someone who did a lot of uh, publication and books in my area of research. Uh, John Story, for example, I still remember their name until today yeah, because through my literature search, I was able to identify that these are the key researchers. And when I went to look for uh, uh, journals, articles pertaining to my to area that I'm doing, I started looking for a journal written by these people first, because I know they are doing research similar to what I'm doing, right? A relevant organization might include academic, government, and professional bodies. There will be key journals in your field in which peer-reviewed articles are published. So maybe you look at, as for example, like the University of Chicago, um, they have their own journal uh, that uh, being published in the area of uh, leadership, for example. Uh, UTM, for example, uh, I used to be the, uh, the, in the editorial board of Journal of Technology. I think it's now a Scopus Journal. So you know that you want to, you want to find articles pertaining to technology, like technology management or anything, you can just go to Journal of Technology. You can find, you can search a lot of articles pertaining to technology management in that particular journal, right? So there will be key, key people. You should identify which journals are relevant to you and keep referring to them for on a regular basis throughout your research for significant publication. So as you continue to trawl through the literature, you will begin to notice familiar names and hence identify key researchers in your area of interest. And you may find it useful to search for all the published work and keep an eye on their current publication. And they can also one day be your external examiner, right? Because um, that was what I did with my most of my PhD students. Um, I will look at the um, uh, key resources, uh, where they're coming from. And then <clears throat> if uh, then I will, I will start contacting. If I know the examiner, I will contact them and, and, and recommend them to be the examiner for my students, right? And it is crucial to include literature searching as an ongoing part of the research process. Although your, pro your progress, your purpose will shift from being exploratory to becoming more focused as you, your reading progresses. So reading is very important. Read, read, and read, right? Read, read, and read. Um, kalau kata the Malay word, you read until you, you rasa nak muntah, right? <laughs> you read, read, and read, okay? I remember um, at one time um, I spent too much reading that I went to see my supervisor. Uh, he looked at me and said, wow, you've read too much. Hassan, go and take a break. Uh, he asked me to go to Europe for a break, which I never did. I never crossed the European, the English channel. I stayed in the UK because uh, to me, I come in to study and I went to go back and, and, and complete my, uh, my, my, my PhD. Because at that time, we were having an economic crisis. I don't like to travel. It's too expensive. I don't spend money in buying cars over there. My friend brought back Mercedes. No, I did not. I brought back tons and tons boxes of books. Okay. You come to my house, you can see I got three, uh, three uh, I got uh, bookshelves at my living room, bookshelf at uh, TV area, bookshelf even in my, in my, in my, uh, in, my uh, in, in, in my master bedroom, because basically those are the books which I treasure until today, which I bought uh, when I was doing my PhD research, right? So that's the point. Okay, any, any, any question for the time being? I think if I answered some of the question, Okay, now um, let's move on a bit if there is no question. Let's talk about sources of information. <clears throat> now, sources of information is very important. When you need to do a literature search, you've got to ask yourself, first thing is where do I look for uh, my sources of information, or my references, where do I look for sources of theories, for example. Now, normally uh, books uh, is your first port of call, right? Books is your first port of call. Uh, this is where the again the library plays a very important role. Uh, you may have even access to ebooks, like my case, for example. I hate ebooks. I like to flip through the pages. I like to hear the sound of the page. Right? I like the smell of papers. Okay, so I would always, uh, if I need to do some research, I always go for real books. Okay, although I can, I we have access to ebooks and whatnot. I I, I don't know. Maybe I'm the old school uh, type of person. I would rather uh, read the actual book. I would rather buy the book. So I would spend monthly about uh, 200 ringgit a month just to buy books. And now you can just buy books online. So basically it's easier to have access, okay? 
although I have access to e-books, um, I would prefer the real books. Now, so books are very important. Okay, it's the first part of call for many researchers. This is where you 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 uh, you begin you begin to explore the field of your field of research by reading books. So your your university library bookshelves will be lined with books in printed forms. And it is possible to access many of them electronically as ebooks. So basically, uh, when you come to books, these are very important. Normally, textbooks, this is where you start looking for underpinning principle, under, underpinning theory, underpinning concept. Yeah, uh, uh, theories in a field, not just in journals, but, but also in books. Okay, someone mentioned just now where do you start looking for the underpinning theory? Right, start looking at textbook first. For example, you're looking at the theory of leadership. Um, you may want to uh, look at uh, North House. Okay, go to North House. North House will explain the evolution of research in, in, in leadership. All right, and then he will discuss some of the underpinning uh, theories pertaining to leadership. So it's quite interesting uh, because I, I, I have both copy, um, which cost me dearly to buy the, the actual book. Like the ebooks, uh, got it free, but the actual te textbook is quite expensive. But I, 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 I still keep it until today. Okay, so they often contain information which are generally accepted as being commonly agreed knowledge in a field, right? Because it's been published, right? Specialized book may, for example, report on research completed for a PhD thesis or a specific theoretical theoretical area of research. So basically, they can be book chapters, right? It can be book chapters, collection of chapters. Uh, uh, I had two book chapters published based on my PhD student's research. Okay, we published it together. Um, and uh, she took a certain uh, part of a thesis. Uh, she, we had to rewrite it again and publish it as a book chapter. So you can find uh, some, some, uh, some report on, on research, which is in book chapters, right? So they are basically based on auditory board they did, uh, or paper on conference can also be uh, be published as conference proceeding. They can also be considered as specialized books. This can be also your source of reference. Um, reference books like, like dictionaries, encyclopedias, directories, I used to find specific information or definition. I remember quite a number of students, they would like to cite uh, dictionaries uh, in term, when defining uh, the, the terms that they use in your thesis. Okay, there, but that is not operational. That tend to be just a definition. Right? If you talk about operational definition, you may want to look at the support by the literature review. These are now likely to be available in electronic or printed format. Electronic versions are often accessible online. So you can, you can get them online, okay? Okay, and then we have journal article. This is also a very common source of information. It contains collection of peer review academic articles written by different researchers or practitioners in a particular field. Each journal has a specific set of purposes. So you got to know which journal, but please uh, be careful with journals uh, that are uh, predatory in nature, okay? Uh, we had this problem recently at one university um, where 20 articles were published into a suspected predatory journal, they managed to pull back the, the articles uh, before it was published, right? So be extra careful, um, uh, especially when you want to publish them, okay? Now it contains collection of peer reviewed artic academic articles, which are written by different researchers and practitioners in the particular field. So you, you got to find which journals are relevant or suitable to your field of study, okay? The, for example, um, if you are talking about entrepreneurship, you have the Journal of uh, Economic Entrepreneurship uh, and a few other journals that you can, you can refer to. The peer review process means that other academics or, public or professionals in the field have reviewed and make recommendations about each article published. Therefore, it is of high quality, right? So if you refer to peer review journal, uh, that means you can be certain that uh, that article is of high quality, it can be trusted. Journals include the most recent ideas in circulation in a discipline, and the majority are now available electronically. Normally, you can access through university libraries. Um, it's either both printed or in electronic format. So if you have access, 
uh, for example, if you are, you are you are a student at DRB Highcom University, you should be able to have access online uh, to 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 some of the uh, journals available online. Okay. Okay. So and also you can also access to interlibrary loan. All right. Uh, Publish literature review of a field uh, in the form of journal articles, uh, books, which provide a summary, a synthesis of research and field in the area, and also gray literatures. Now, why did, why, why did I mention gray literatures? Uh, refers to material that is not published commercially. It is difficult to obtain through the usual book selling and bibliographical channel, right? Okay. Uh, typically, gray literatures include reports, thesis, dissertation, because they're not published. That's why they call gray. Conference proceeding, research in progress, leaflet, posters, media reports, pattern, letters, and diaries. Uh, reports could be written in com by companies or government organization, and might report, for example, on an investigation in uh, an event or finding. And I mean, let's say a flood occurs recently, so the uh, 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 government agency published a report on that. Uh, those are considered as great, great literature in the sense that um, it is normally not published. You have to gain access uh, through uh, the, that particular department. Thesis and dissertation can be helpful to access the research of other masters and doctoral students by reading their thesis and dissertation. I, I know certain universities, if you're doing a PhD research, they do not allow uh, masters uh, research to be cited. So you got to check the policy of the university. Electronic versions are becoming more widely available. For example, we have ProQuest, dissertation, and thesis and whatnot, okay? So you can gain access of uh, previous thesis uh, through electronic, electronic version. Or you just go to the, your library. Normally, the library will keep a copy of the previous thesis if you want to have a look at the uh, thesis. When I was in the UK, I, always, I would spend time uh, on the thesis section during my early, during my early years uh, of the library. Okay, it's good to see. Uh, then I went back later, a few years later. I, it's good to see that my thesis is already uh, on the shelf, uh, and students are referring to my thesis. That's what I normally do when I started. <clears throat> okay, very interesting. Uh, Pawasan, uh, if there was a systematic review being performed by a researcher, whereby most of the literature review have been covered, could I just adopt, cite this whole work in my literature review portion? Yeah, you can, uh, but make sure that you cite uh, citation in citation. In other words, you cite the work of this person, which is published, um, which is published in in in, in that journal, and in, in, in a way, adopt his or her work in my literature review. You still have to do your own. Uh, uh, you cannot just uh, uh, adopt it as it is. I think you still need has to. You need you still need to. Um, um, you need to synthesize it with your literature review to see whether there is a need for you to uh, uh, adapt, adopt, or review it, okay? So it must be supported by literature. If, it, if you feel that it is okay, you want to adopt it, you must be supported by your literature review. Why do you want to adopt it as it is? Is there a reason why you want to adopt it? Um, so it must be supported, it must be justified. You cannot just uh, take it like that, okay? Um, it's not plagiarism because you cite. As long as you cite, it's okay. Um, but you need to justify why you are uh, adopting it. Yeah, there must be a reason for you to adopt it. You cannot just uh, put it in there. <clears throat> Does the participant will get today webinar copy? Uh, I think so. Uh, if I register, will there be okay? Um, prof, new support can be taken as one of the supporting documents. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, who is on the other side? Can you please unmute? Okay, news, news report. Now, this is a very important issue. Um, um, certain universities do not allow. I know some universities do not allow at all for you to use news report uh, in the sense that uh, it, it is not... Uh, you know how a reporter is when they write the, the articles in the, uh, or you're talking about, okay, no, it's not about a reporter, you're talking about, it's not a news report, I think. So you're talking about news report. Okay, news report, you have to be extra careful because sometimes the, the reporter may have to jive out uh, the report, so it may not be reliable. Okay, if I were you, I would avoid it. 
unless if that articles come up from newspaper uh, you can you can but try to minimize in other words you must be very careful when you you come with this uh, gray literatures right the link is not generated yet uh, okay sorry 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 okay. okay let's move on now other sources of information is a conference literature now, academic conference produce collections of printed abstract and often publish proceeding publish yeah, the proceedings publish at this one you can you can you can uh, you can use it as source of reference uh selection of papers presented in the conference okay i remember i attended one conference in malaysia and uh, it was it was published in the proceeding uh, and i use it back again uh, in my in in my in my thesis uh, and, and normally that is a lot because it is it is uh, it is published right popular media newspaper practitioner trade journals and magazine may be relevant for some research topic uh, so that a researcher can find out about contemporary event and reaction from the general public but you have to be very careful when you use it right uh, you 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 may not um, sometimes i do not allow my students to sign but i allow them to just read and have some picture some ideas of the contemporary issue that is happening, but I will not allow them to cite. Okay. A monograph, work in progress papers. Some researcher centers may uh, make specialist uh, papers available. For example, uh, some research center publish a monograph on uh, certain research, right? So you 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 uh, you must ask the permission to gain access. Normally, uh, it is published. Sometimes they are not published. Uh, and specialist literature, primary data resources in some specialist field. Uh, the literature may include maps, music, diaries, manuscript, and whatever. Uh, you can you can also gain access to it. Uh, for example, like um, I'm not familiar with music and what, what else, but manuscript, for example, you can yeah if you want to cite them. And this is a very imp uh, important issue: the websites. Now, when it comes to website, you must use it sparingly and carefully, right? Uh, normally, website will provide different types of information and judgment about the quality of the material access. Uh, and they have to be made on individual basis. You have to be very careful, okay, whatever information coming from the internet. And I notice students like to cite um, articles from the website because it's easier. They can easily find it, right? So they like to um, cite a lot of uh, citation coming in from uh, the website. Um, but you have to be extra careful, okay? Uh, some example of the types of website that could be used as a source of information, among which include, for example, professional organization, such as the British Psychology Association, right? These are established organization, or the Malaysian government site, such as the SME Corporation Malaysia, uh, which provides access to definition of SMEs in Malaysia and uh, other economic report. <clears throat> or charity organizations such as Oxfam, they provide information about world events, okay uh, and appeals and access to development reports and resources uh, and increasingly sites such as this uh, they are incorporated with social media such as instagram twitter facebook blogs podcasts or, or you, even youtube uh, all of which are gaining up-to-date information but again as i said you must use them sparingly and carefully right and of course we have wikipedia uh, this is very controversial. Um, there was once a student who cited from Wikipedia. Uh, we asked him to take it down. Okay, it is an online encyclopedia where anyone can edit. Uh, if you think Wikipedia entry to provide, uh, I mean, it's essential to evaluate the reference cited and access. Uh, many academic institutions do not accept Wikipedia, right? So check with your university. Um, if they do not, then do not use it, right? I do not know how that particular student were citing Wikipedia when uh, the university do not allow it. We managed to uh, spot it during the Viva. I think um, the supervisor was a little bit embarrassed. Okay, so whatever it is, please do not cite from Wikipedia. I think most universities do not allow. And finally, the catalogs. There's a lot of catalogs that you can access on. Um, that's why you have to uh, be good with the librarian so that you can gain access to some of the catalogs available. Some of them are online catalogs. Okay, these are digital library basically of academic journal books and primary sources. One like the JSTOR or Scopus, run by Elsevier, is one of the largest known publication database 
and is even used to index papers as per their quality. So finding papers through Scopus is worth a search. It contains about 22,000 papers, I think more than that now, from over 5,000 institutions. However, it will require you to sign up to use it. So basically, you can use your library to gain access, uh, web of science or web of knowledge, and its scientific offshoot web of science. Again, has a particular large database started by, by being a citation index. It's now a citation platform hosting many papers run by Clarivet Analytics, okay? So these are the source. Um, even Google Scholar can also be um, a good source of information, uh, but to also access papers behind the paywall. In other words, there are papers that you have to pay in another journal. You can actually find them free of charge um, under Google Scholar. It works by finding the correct paper and giving you a number of sources to choose from. So these are basically uh, some downloadable, down, downloadable and non-payable version of the paper, uh, which are also uh, commonly from sources such as ResearchGate and RZ. So there are many sources that you can uh, gain articles. That's why I say, um, I, I mean, uh, during my time, yes, we can say that, wow, uh, it's quite difficult to find articles. Um, but now I think there are a lot of uh, tools, a lot of platform, a lot of uh, resources. It's all up to you. It's all up to you to search and it's all up to you to read them. And it's all up to you to, uh, to write your literature review based on what you have read. Okay, now <clears throat> we are supposed to start at 11.30. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I Okay, for certain code, I can't replace. There is definition of certain meaning. How should I handle this? The tenetin becomes high. Oh, yes, uh, we'll get to that. Actually, um, uh, uh, when you have too many quotations, uh, tenetin will pick it up. So one way is uh, to rephrase it. Lah, yeah, uh, It's okay to rephrase it in that sense that uh, definition of certain meaning. Uh, I think it's okay to rephrase. Um, if you have too many quotations, that will not be good for tenetin. Uh, it, may, it may feel that you are hiding behind uh, someone else's code. So the best thing is um, to rephrase it as long as you, um, you do not go, you do not deviate from its true meaning. I think that should be okay because it is based on your own words, All right? <clears throat> Bit more. <clears throat> there are also other sources now. This is something which I think uh, you need to discuss with your supervisor whether they do allow. Uh, when I was in UK, <clears throat> I, I used a lot of email sources. For example, I was communicating with Mike. Uh, Mike was in Malaysia at that time. I was in UK. So my supervisor allowed me to use those email as a, as a sources of reference. Um, now you have LinkedIn. Uh, you can send message to your, through LinkedIn to the researcher and ask for the papers. Okay. Uh, and I think this is good for you guys. Uh, for those of you who did not have an account yet, please open up your account. Uh, so that you can gain access uh, to some of the researchers who are on LinkedIn, which uh, can be all over the world, right? So sign up to ResearchGate and monitor publication output. There is even a request function on, on ResearchGate for, for papers. So you can request for papers on ResearchGate. Uh, sign up to a general of interest. This may be expensive uh, unless it is backed up by your university, right? Check with your university library uh, which journal they are subscribing to. Uh, for health medicine or even uh, veterinary medicine papers, search through National Institute of Health site as they have many, uh, they have a dedicated publication database. Or you can even search in PubMed Central, includes papers from NASA, publicly available research, uh, especially on, uh, on space. Okay. Or ask about connection if they have a specific paper or have access to it. You, you, can, ask, uh, you can ask any of these. Look at your university library, search for both digital and physical copies. Or you can even uh, look for conference paper, short reviews, because even though they are much shorter in nature, they can contain very useful and usable information. Uh, or sm a smaller uh, open access journal, uh, not always on this database. So Google and LinkedIn searches can help to identify other under the radar uh, journals. And finally, Mendeley, uh, reference manager. It's a reference manager an academic social network, they will help you organize your research, okay? So you need, you can collaborate with others through Mendeley. And I think uh, your library sh should be able to, I think in UNITA, for example, our library conduct training on how to use uh, Mendeley. So check with your library, right? If they do, then uh, you can use that as an access, okay? 
All right. Uh, I would like to ask a question. If the cited literature is of Q4 or lower quality, but it is helpful to my research, can I cite this literature or I drop this literature? Wow, that depends on your university policy. Uh, some universities, uh, it's okay. Uh, from what I know, I'm not sure about research university. When I was in UTM, uh, there was no issue on this. Which university are you from, uh, Kun? Are you from the RU or research university? I think there should be no issue um, based on your citation. <clears throat> this is the first time I, I heard about this. Uh, Q4 or lower quality. Well, are you coming? I, um, that depends on your university. You got to check the policy of your university. If you say no, then you can't, then you have, you, have, you have no choice. But if there is no such policy, I think proceed. Because some of the Q4 journals are, are okay. There may be new journals, uh, but they may have uh, good papers in there as well. So there should not be no reason why you should not cite from this journal. Okay, so. Um, we have 10 more minutes before we stop. Uh, let me just proceed a bit more. Now, in, in the process of conducting literature, so this is my, on my experience as well. Uh, I would tell my students to do this. Um, get, to know, get to know the library, all right? Um, I, uh, one of my PhD students was not able to come to uh, UNITA, for example. So she would spend time in the uh, Selangor State Library. Um, and there were some good uh, resources there available as well. Um, but normally you don't find that many academic journals lah, when you go to a uh, state library because normally it's meant for public uh, consumption. So normally it's best if you can, you can uh, spend time uh, at uh, get to know the library of your universities or any universities close by. Although more and more information is available electronically, the libraries and their printed resources must not be forgotten. Okay, try to go through and gain access. Uh, despite the convenience of being able to access the literature you need from your desk or even your mobile phone, you may still enjoy browsing the shelf and looking at the printed volume. So basically just go and look at some of the books or printed uh, literatures available. Start your literature research with your visit to your university library. I know some of you, are, for example, like Jasmine, you are in, uh, you're here, but your university is in Pakan, Pahang. Um, I'm not sure whether, I think we can be, uh, we check with library, for example, in UNITA or in uh, other close by uh, universities, they may allow you with some, uh, some small charge. I do not know. Uh, they may or they may not be any charge at all. Okay. Uh, when I was in the UK, I, I can go to Nottingham University Library. I can just check, go in. If I want to borrow books, I would borrow through, open, uh, through interlibrary loans some of the books, good books in my research are available at the Nottingham University. So I would travel up to Nottingham, which is not far from my university. I spend some time uh, reading some of the books there. If I need, I'll just go back. Hey, I need that book for a few few months. So please, can I get it on, you know, on the interlibrary loan? So the library will borrow from me. Okay. Consult your supervisors and colleagues. Ask them for references that will introduce you to the field. But uh, do your own searches as well. I mean, do not be too, I mean, if you always go and bug your supervisors, uh, it doesn't look as if you, you are conducting your own research, all right? Uh, but do ask them, sometimes they can give you, but like my supervisor would love to give me articles without even me asking for it, okay? Uh, sometimes he would just come to my office, hey, son, are you around? Yeah, yeah, I read these articles. So he, uh, he will introduce me to some of the contacts Right, uh, he knows someone from Bank of uh, England, for example, so he will uh, create the contact. And that is why to find, it's good to find a supervisor who has good networking, in the sense that um, they will, it will help you in your, in your research, okay? All right, um, so there will be charges here, yes, mean. There will be charges, I can, I can, I can, you am library member, okay, good, you can go for it, all right? Um, it is very important. I'm, I'm, quite, I'm, I'm quite worried when uh, <clears throat> my, to see my, uh, my doctoral student uh, not spending time in the library uh, looking for books or whatever. That shows that uh, I'm not sure whether they're doing much literature search or not. All right? uh, more so when they started uh, writing their literature review. Okay, um, 
Let me get, okay, when you talk about uh, how, how do you, how do you uh, conduct a literature search, uh, one of the ways through keyword uh, searches, right? Uh, when you want a more detailed idea about a topic you wish to research, uh, you can sort of like uh, start to identify your keywords and conduct searches on the library catalog. Okay, start with the library catalog first. It can be an online catalog. Yeah. And identification of keywords involve the selection of nouns, adjectives, which most accurately describe uh, what you're looking for. Okay, look, look at what, what are the nouns and adjectives. Well, start with that keyword. When you devise your keyword, it may be helpful to consult dictionaries, uh, thesaurus, uh, encyclopedias, or whatever. Uh, and spelling is very important. You must know the right spelling. Okay. Use a keyword specific in articles you read to help you devise further keyword search by, for yourself. But be aware that even using keyword, you may miss a few articles. The author of a particular article may have chosen a different keyword to describe your work. So basically, you've got to also determine what keywords others are using, all right? And keep a record of your few keywords so that uh, you, don't waste, you, you do not want to waste time looking again based on that keywords, okay? So you have to do extra work later on. And another method is a snowball technique. As you read the subject, you're likely to redefine the focus of your research, okay? And it may lead to a new or a revised keyword searches. I remember I started with a different uh, research area, then I move on to research topic, and then I move to another research topic. So definitely, definitely, my my search strategy uh, will also change. Okay, now I have a new keywords to search for. You will begin to recognize familiar authors through your keyword search. You you get to know uh, who are the main authors in this particular area. Uh, cited text in the bibliography of the book that you are reading and will therefore start to look for more specific text in catalogs and journal based on the certain authors. So the small ball technique when you follow up references from the bibliographies of the text you read is well used. And in most cases, it involves following up references uh, to the previous work. So you may uh, going back to the previous look and look at the references. And many electronic database and journal now allow you to track forward citation. For example, if you're looking and an article published in 2021, you can find article published subsequently uh, where the 2021 article has been cited. Okay, if you say you took one article published in January, um, um, uh, so certain electronic database will help you to come up with uh, articles that were published after that in that same year. Okay, okay, um, I, I think uh, I have about five more minutes. Is there any question before we, we stop uh, for a while? There is no question uh, because I, I've not really come yet to the actual <coughs> um, writing up on your literature review. <coughs> this more on the uh, preparation side, um, what needs to be done, okay, uh, before you actually uh, start writing. Because I noticed that the, the the search strategy is very important. How do you search for your literature? I noticed not not. Uh, not many students have that skills uh, in searching literatures to the extent that they may miss uh, some some uh, some significant uh, literatures which may be important to their research, right? So it is very important for you uh, to come up with a good search strategies. Um, whatever it is, um, get to know where the sources are. As I said earlier, the library is very important during this stage of literature search. So get to know your librarian, get to know your library, get to know what are the sources available at the library or even uh, uh, any, any, any other sources, right? And once you get that right, I think uh, your, 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 your research strategy, your search strategy will enable you to come up with a good, uh, with a good uh, strategy in the sense that you may not, you may get what you want. Can we cite working papers? Probably, yes, you can. You can cite working papers as well. Um, I do cite quite a number of them, um, but you must um, mention that at the end of the, at the reference that this is uh, unpublished. Yeah? It's not published. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, yes, you're right. 
Just the same link to attend. Okay. Okay. I think uh, organizer, we have about four more minutes. Any other question before we stop and continue? I do not want to continue anymore because in the afternoon we will we will discuss about how uh, to read. Uh, but anyway, let, let, let just me go. To, let just let me go just through briefly about this. Uh, the next session on reading efficiently. Now, once you have search, I think I, I noticed that um, students not always complain. Prof, I got too many articles to read. I can't read all of them. I don't have the time. Right? I can't read. I can't. I can I don't have all. I don't. I don't have the time to read. I've got so many articles. So how do I read them? I remember when I was taking my MCE in 1976. Um, I came across a book given to a friend of mine, um, and actually just passed away. Uh, he got 11 A's in MCE, uh, one of the good guys, one of the studious guy. Uh, um, he gave me a book on uh, a book titled SK to our method of reading. So I started reading the book when I was in form four and I started to employ the method. And that method was very successful. I mean, this method was actually introduced in 1946 and it is still relevant until today. So there may be other methods that you can use in reading your, um, your articles, your literature, this can be one of the methods that you can employ. The SQ3R method, right? Uh, <clears throat> quite a number of books on uh, literature search would recommend uh, this method uh, when you read articles um, for, 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 for your research, okay? Okay, what is the difference between major difference between master's and PhD thesis? Okay, normally a PhD, a master's thesis then is made of depth, depth and scope. Okay, the master's thesis may have a, it's not, um, how, how should I say it? Um, the scope may not be wider and the depth of the study may not be as deep as what you did for your PhD. And I noticed that most of the time, most people when they did their master's research, they will follow up with a more uh, thorough PhD research, right? Uh, with a more, with a bigger scope, with a, uh, with a more depth uh, into the research, um, with a bigger, bigger conceptual, mo conceptual model than they did for the masters. It's good to have uh, to move on from your masters because uh, you already have part of the literature review there. All you need to do is to update, uh, move to the next level. I got some friends who did their PhD; uh, they completed in time because. Um, they already done a master's in that particular area. So when they did their PhD, especially from UUM, um, quite a number of them did their master's locally. So they came, uh, when they came to, for their uh, PhD overseas, um, it's just a continuation of what they did in the master's program. And basically they finished in time. And uh, that is on, on the condition that the supervisor accept that particular topic. <clears throat> okay. How many papers are considered enough for making a literature review? Ah, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I pose that question to my supervisors, right? Um, uh, he keep on saying to me, uh, son, you need to read more. You need to read more. You need to read more um, to the extent that when I uh, um, reaches one year, because my, my, in, in the UK, our proposal defense is very simple. Then you tell me, Hassan, okay, you're going to have your uh, proposal defense in two weeks from today. Uh, so basically, I think I've looked at your uh, model, I've looked at your literature review, I'm happy with it. So until your supervisor says he's happy with it, okay, then you know that you had uh, enough there. If you say, no, I want you to add some more, then you have to add some more, right? So basically, uh, you got to understand, you got to have that, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I tend to have a good uh, relationship with my supervisor. I know what he wants and he knows what I've got. So we, we get along very well. Um, it's very important for you to manage your supervisor so that you know what he wants, all right? So I had no problem as well. So he's been really good to me and I've been really good to him. Um, and we had a very professional uh, relationship as a, pro a supervisor and an examiner. So until today, we are good friends, okay? So basically, uh, how many papers? It depends on uh, your, if your, if your, whether, your, uh, your, your model is good enough uh, to, be, uh, to be tested uh, in, in, in the next stage of your research, okay? That you have to discuss with your supervisor. Um, that is why uh, I got one proposal coming up, for example, uh, 
she, she said she wants to uh, go for property tax. No, hold on. Uh, I will decide to let me go through your proposal and see whether uh, you have su sufficiently prepared for it. Okay. So this is something which I think uh, when you become a supervisor, you will you will understand what I say. <coughs> Sorry, I got so throat. I can't really speak too much. I I I think I I think I took something last night which I'm not supposed to take. I'm allergic to certain food. Okay, I think we take a break now. Um, and the can can uh, uh, organizer, I pass it back over to you. We are supposed to stop at eleven thirty, right? Hello. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, for for the, the topic of uh, literature review. And then thank you for, for everyone for attending today's uh, session, morning session. So hopefully we can meet again uh, at 2 p.m. Okay, so for the next session, still under the same uh, section for the literature review. Okay, with the further uh, discussion on that uh, chapter. So till then, I can see you again after uh, after the lunch, uh, I mean, after the uh, this uh, afternoon session, eh? for this afternoon session. Okay, thank you, everyone. Okay, see you guys later. Okay, Prof. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. See you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Prof. Thank you. Thank you.